The fact that each subsequent part of the GTA series is similar to the previous one is obvious and logical. When launching a game, the developers draw conclusions based on the player's opinions about what worked in a given title, implementing precisely those specific elements liked by the players in the next parts. However, what's most important from the point of view of this episode is that, apart from proven things, each part of the game has some new or completely changed aspect, which often makes it unique for a given game and catches the player's eye. It's these elements that we'll talk about today, thus highlighting one, sometimes two great advantages of a given part of the Grand Theft Auto series. Starting from the very beginning, the unique feature of GTA 1 is the ability to choose and then name our protagonist. In GTA 1, we have eight protagonists, four men and four women. Therefore, regardless of whether a boy or a girl sits in front of the screen, everyone will be able to choose the protagonist for themselves. It's a small thing, but very cool, because it allows the player to better identify with the main character, and thus also better empathize with the events that we experience in GTA 1. In the meantime, we move on to the next two parts of GTA, namely London 1961 and London 1969. These are, as you probably remember, the first add-ons that appeared in the GTA series. As a digression, in retrospect, we believe that it was a big mistake of the developers that the expansion required the base game to run. It was normal at the time, but the case of the DLCs to GTA 4 showed that it could be done better. As we remember, the add-ons were a separate part of the set, and thus the player who had GTA 4, for example on Xbox 360, to play the add-ons for GTA 4 on PC did not need to buy the game for another platform again. Anyway, getting to the point, the London titles are unique in that they allowed us to experience a small nugget of British culture in the GTA series. It may sound absurd, but in fact, GTA London takes us beyond the United States, where we can at least feel a small bit of Great Britain vibes a little, and it happens twice. Unfortunately, this unique feature of GTA 1 add-ons has also partly become their curse. It is, among others, London, which contributed to the low popularity of add-ons, which allowed the creators to draw certain conclusions, which resulted in the fact that, since 1999, we have not seen a location in a country other than the United States in the GTA series. The next item on our list is GTA 2, which appeared on the market in 1999. This part of GTA surpassed its predecessor in many respects. Finally, the players have received such, let's say, a full-fledged storyline. And besides, the developers decided to create a game that is, in a way, timeless due to its futuristic style. What do we think sets GTA apart from other parts of this popular franchise? Well, the answer lies in the famous motto of this game, which is Remember, respect is everything. Exactly. We think that the gang and respect system in GTA 2 has been brilliantly done. To push the story forward, the player is forced to play dirty against all organizations of the criminal underworld. There's no such thing as being attached to one gang in the game. When we gain the respect of one faction, another gang will automatically start to hate us, which we have a constant preview of in the upper left corner of the screen. Since the protagonist of the game needs money and doesn't know where it's better to entrust his services to opponents, the man is forced to grab every possible job to slowly climb to the top of the food chain. To this day, we terribly regret that this system did not stay with us for longer in the next parts. Meanwhile, we're leaving the 2D universe and entering the 3D era. In GTA 3, Claude is not such a popular character among fans of the series, which is not surprising at all. The man doesn't say a single word throughout the game. He is soulless and blindly chasing money. What's funny, at the same time, it's also a great advantage. What? The developers themselves spoke about the advantage that we'll talk about in a moment, answering a question from fans. Well, Claude, at least from a certain stage of production, was to remain a silent protagonist so that the player could better identify with him, telling himself the story in his head, which we learn through cutscenes. When the characters give instructions to Claude, the man reacts in a certain way, which is clearly visible in his gestures. For instance, during meetings with Donald Love, Claude imitates his manner of keeping his hands behind his back. On the other hand, during the cutscenes with Asuka's brother, Claude bows like a member of the Yakuza. During these moments of awkward silence, the player has the opportunity to tell himself what the protagonist of GTA 3 might think about a given topic. 
Then we move on to GTA Vice City, whose best and unique side, in our opinion, is the atmosphere of the game and the soundtrack. Yes, it is cliche, but it's hard to disagree with. Each part of the series has its well-chosen immersive atmosphere, plus music perfectly matched to this climate, but Vice City is on a whole nother level. Miami was perfectly recreated for those years, filled with drugs, expensive cars, and beautiful women, all accompanied by songs characteristic of the 1980s. Even though we want to push the plot forward, on the other hand, from time to time, we just feel like staying on a motorcycle and immersing ourselves in beautiful pop ballads or escaping from the routine of everyday life by listening to sharp rock music hits. GTA San Andreas, a computer game that many consider being one of the greatest games of all time, to this day, the title continues to prove to players that it hides a lot of secrets and curiosities. You could say a lot about GTA San Andreas. The list of advantages would be as thick as cocaine lumps in Jerry Martinez's nose. <laughs> However, if we were to choose only one element that is the best in San Andreas, we would focus on complexity and a powerful injection of content in the game. After some two years following the previous part, GTA fans receive bikes, tractors, jets, passenger planes, quads, and many other previously unseen vehicles in the series. CJ's range of equipment also far exceeds that of Tommy Versetti. The plot of the game is so multi-threaded and varied that we are kept in suspense all the time. And there's so many topics for discussion that we could discuss them all day. Furthermore, we get three completely different wonderful metropolises. Los Santos was dominated by the sad image of the ghetto and crack epidemic in the 1990s. Majestic San Fierro was following technological progress and bathed in regular rainstorms and torn apart by earthquakes. And Las Venturas, the city of sin, filled with luxury hotels and casinos where the creme de la creme meets from all over the state of San Andreas. And when we think about how many other gameplay elements were to be introduced, we quickly come to a simple conclusion. GTA San Andreas is the most extensive part of the series. Sometimes looking at GTA Advance, we often get the impression that the game looks like a slightly handicapped version of GTA 3, but for the Game Boy Advance. And what's interesting, there is a grain of truth in this, because the game was created on the foundations of the GTA 3 port for Game Boy Advance, which we may tell more about someday. As much bad things as not to say about this game, there's also one certain feature here, which, objectively speaking, is the strongest point of GTA Advance, which some parts could envy, namely, the unusual ending of the game's storyline. By playing technically every part of Grand Theft Auto, history repeats itself in a way. Starting from scratch, we gradually gain more and more influence, eventually becoming the undisputed king of the criminal underworld in a given city or even state. In turn, in GTA Advance, things are different. The protagonist of the game finally decides to leave Liberty City and go straight to sunny Colombia, which simply distinguishes this title. When it comes to GTA Liberty City stories, we have to be completely honest with you here and say right away that we had a very hard time finding this part of GTA its greatest asset. However, after much thought, we concluded that the strongest point of Liberty City stories is the low multi-threading. Yes, you didn't miss here, and we didn't twist anything. During the plot, there may be minor threads that slightly deviate from the main part of the story, such as the thread of Toshiko Kassen or Tony Cipriani's mother. But when we look at the whole thing, it turns out that we're practically rolling out the same topic all the time, working for the Leone Mafia and bringing it to the top. And while this is a really fun thread, it can start to feel a bit monotonous and boring after a while. It's just that we as players felt the need to take a break from time to time because we were simply saturated with this Mafia thread. And although in the Mafia series, such threads are the bread and butter, they're conducted in a much more interesting way which is why we constantly want to continue them. Anyway, summing up, it's a strong focus on one thread in GTA Liberty City stories that is something unique, but also, unfortunately, something negative. In the case of GTA Vice City stories, the answer to the question of what is the best showcase of this game came to our minds very quickly. Well, in our opinion, it's an absorbing system of building a criminal empire. The whole feature draws handfuls from the aspect of buying businesses in GTA Vice City 
and taking over gang territories in GTA San Andreas, creating a brilliant mix. Various businesses are available in Vice City Stories. Some of them are for sale, while others are occupied by hostile gangs. In both cases, we have to make a little effort to make the property ours. Then there are the specifications of businesses, collecting protection money, running brothels, trading and smuggling drugs, or even doing robberies. To get more money, we have to expand our assets and perform special tasks for a specific business. Moreover, we mustn't forget that other criminal organizations may have a sneak peek at our businesses, so we can expect attacks periodically. With the simplified mechanics of attacking our area by a hostile gang from GTA San Andreas. Meanwhile, we're moving on to the last universe in the GTA series, which began with GTA 4 in 2008. In the case of this installment, we will repeat what we've mentioned before, namely that, in our opinion, the story in this game is undoubtedly what makes it so special. After many years of regularly receiving stories about the adventures of thoroughbred criminals who did not necessarily know the gray realities of life, we finally get a story about a man who has been through real hell since childhood. Nico Bellic is our favorite protagonist of the series for a reason. The man repeatedly talks about all the bad things that happened to him, and we as players can experience how these keep coming back to him with double intensity. As in GTA San Andreas, there is something multi-threading here, but it's kept in a more adult and serious style. Of course, there are humorous moments, but there are not as many of them as before. Baby, when I look into your eyes, it means something. I see little Romans, I see little Mallories, I see stars, I see angels. In my homeland, we have a saying. Yeah, we got one too. You're a fag. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Roman, you fucking idiota. In the case of GTA 4 and the uniqueness of this game, we must also add a system of meeting friends and girlfriends. While dating girls was already a thing in GTA San Andreas, here it's been very nicely modified. Now, not only can the player take his girlfriend for a romantic dinner, to a club, or for a ride, but also spend time with her during various other activities, such as playing pool or darts. In addition, we can see Nico talking to his girlfriends many times, which adds even more realism. However, when it comes to going out with friends, this is a real sensation in the history of the Grand Theft Auto series. Going bowling with Roman, playing pool games with Little Jacob, or going to stand-ups with Packy McReary is just a fraction of what we can do in the game. Probably some will now say that in GTA 5, we can also meet with friends. And you're right, but looking at how many opportunities to spend a nice time there are in GTA 4, GTA 4 wins with GTA 5 in this respect. In the meantime, it's time to talk about GTA The Lost and Damned, and The Ballad of Gay Tony, two DLCs to GTA 4. On one side, we have an even more depressing story about biker gangs, groups of social outcasts who are united by brotherhood, and on the other side, the owner of one of the most prosperous and lucrative nightclubs in Liberty City, who and his bodyguard try to stay on top. And the best thing that add-ons give us, and at the same time are unique, is the opportunity to answer some question marks that appear after passing GTA 4, such as how Nico's cousin Roman was kidnapped. The add-ons also show us the backstage of the extensive diamond and heroin stories. In addition, we go through missions several times where all three protagonists meet, and we can learn the motives of each of them. In short, it's fantastic. And now we're moving on to the part of the GTA series, this time for mobile consoles, namely GTA Chinatown Wars. Even though we personally didn't like this GTA, we can't deny that the game looks sensational compared to previous parts of GTA with a bird's eye view. In turn, what element of the game is the greatest advantage of Chinatown Wars? In our opinion, these are the mini-games. It's still hard to imagine that adding such insignificant aspects of the gameplay could seriously contribute to making the game so attractive to the eye. Giving people tattoos, searching garbage for good guns, buying scratch cards, starting a car, or dealing drugs are just some of the examples where the player can get into the role of this Chinese gangster in Liberty City. And although there will certainly be people who will say that, at times, many games can be annoying because they appear relatively often in the game, it must be said clearly. These mini games are not that complicated after all. Not only that, given that they will appear often, the average player is slowly starting to get used to it, and thus, later on, he should not have any problems. 
And at the very end, we left the icing on the cake, GTA 5. The strongest point of GTA 5, which no other Grand Theft Auto game can match, is the multiplayer mode. Exactly. GTA Online is undoubtedly the reason why so many people still buy GTA 5. The single campaign is appreciated by players, but when compared to the multiplayer mode, it's really in the background. For a full 10 years, Rockstar has been delivering solid updates to GTA 5 players with new content for GTA Online. New vehicles, clothes, weapons, and from time to time, special events such as Valentine's Day or Halloween. Furthermore, GTA Online is constantly stuffed with new game mechanics and game modes. Story missions appear periodically where we can meet the characters from the single player mode again. Players can also get the opportunity to buy various businesses and set up their organizations. They can freely play in the casino or plan heists. If the player is fed up with Los Santos Online, he can head to the island of Cayo Perico, where also great surprises await him. In short, there's always something new. To sum up, as you may have noticed, each part of GTA stands out to a large extent from the others. Each installment of GTA has some unique feature that can be viewed positively or negatively by players. This image kind of shows that, from the beginning, Rockstar has been doing a great job creating games where everyone could find something for themselves. Unfortunately, there's still nothing to hide that some solutions turned out to be a total flop. An attempt to move away from the United States in GTA London ultimately did not bring any tangible results. In turn, relying heavily on a single thread in the case of GTA Liberty City Stories made it clear to the developers that players can expect a diversified story from them. Nevertheless, talking about the GTA series in this aspect, which was visible in this video, we'll experience much more advantages than disadvantages, which once again confirms why we like to delve into conversations about these games so much. If you like this video, we recommend you watch the two episodes that are currently displayed on your screen. In the meantime, thanks for watching, take care, and see you in the next episode. Bye!